Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I appreciate everyone being here. It's wonderful to see everybody. Um, I feel quite honored and humbled to be here talking to you, to you today. Um, I realize the weather's lousy. People are, you know, having to get through some tough times to get here, but I appreciate it. And what I wanted to say, say at the beginning is, growing up in Erie as I did, growing up the son of a newspaper family, oldest son of uh, uh, Ed Mead, who many of you know, obviously, and who unfortunately couldn't be here today, and I wanted to bring that out. He uh, fell about three weeks ago and broke his hip, and we've had his hip replaced, and he's doing fine, but he's at St. Mary's, and it's killing him right now not to be here. Anybody who knows my dad knows that's true, um, but I did want to point out that he was 86 going to work every day. I was driving him to work the day that he fell, and I hope I inherited that same work ethic as I become a judge. But growing up in a newspaper family, I think you, you get a very interesting perspective of how the community works. You know, the, the combination of politics and people and businesses and law. I think I had a very unique perspective growing up. And he also taught me, my family taught me, all my family taught me, about giving back to the community. And that's why I'm here today. I wanted to announce my candidacy for judge because I feel like I have enough to give back to this community, which is what I would like to do. Now, you're going to say, okay, Jamie, why you? Why, why should we vote for you? Why should we support you? Fair question. So, even though I don't like talking about myself, I have to talk about myself. I've learned that about politics right away, by the way. No more modesty. That's out the window. Uh, I grew up here in Erie. I went to uh, school here. I went to prep for two years. I went to Fairview for my last two years. Uh, transferred out to Fairview to play for a, a great coach out there, Jack Bestwick. And then in 1976, I went to Princeton University. And then I went to law school at University of Pittsburgh. Started there in 1980 and went there for three years, graduated in 1983. And it's interesting, when I went to the University of Pittsburgh, the law school, my intention was to come back to Erie right away and work for the newspaper. I thought that would be my career path. But as life often does, it gave me a little bit of curve and I wound up doing a little bit different, different things. When I was in law school, I was uh, asked to be an intern at the United States Attorney's Office, where the federal prosecutors are. And I enjoyed it. I did that for about a year and a half. And luckily, when I graduated from law school in 1983, I became a federal prosecutor. And I, I want to point out one of my best buddies in the world, and the guy I worked with is right there in the, there in the dark coat, and he always distinguished hair, Bruce Teitelbaum. And I worked with Bruce and a lot of, lot of good friends there. And the U.S. Attorney's Office, becoming a federal prosecutor lot, right out of law school, was a very, very unique experience, a wonderful experience. It threw me into a courtroom at the age of about 24 or 25. Right away, it was almost baptism by fire. My first trial I tried there, and you always remember your first trial, Judge Weber, and some of you might remember Judge Weber from the federal bench. Judge Weber was a judge, and he terrified me. And he's an eerie man, and he, he took care of the office up here for years, but very gruff, big, big heart, but gruff. And I was terrified. And I realized, is this what I want to do? Do I want to be in this courtroom? Is, is this my career? But when I did it, I enjoyed it. At the end, we had a good result. The judge took me back, told me all the things that I did wrong, which took a little while. That's how you learn. You don't learn by always by successes, by, by mistakes. But after that, I figured, I, I found out I really enjoyed practicing law. I really enjoyed being a trial lawyer. And down at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Pittsburgh, I had the opportunity to prosecute cases such as organized crime cases, organized crime that involved murder, big frauds, bank robberies, any type of federal crime you can imagine. And it was an honor representing the United States of America. And I truly enjoyed my time there. And I think it gave me a perspective for working in this community if I become judge. Because when I was there, I handled several, several gun cases. And I know there is a problem here in the community. There's a lot of guns, and we're all concerned about it. Anybody who lives here, we have to be realistic. I prosecuted a lot of gun cases, and it gave me a perspective on how these cases should be handled. And I believe throughout my career, I've had the perspective to look at people who don't deserve a break versus those who do. And I think that's the toughest thing a judge does. But I believe I have some insight on how to handle those cases, and I look forward to doing that if I'm elected. Now, after the U.S. Attorney's Office, I went to a large law firm, Jones Day, Revis, and Pogue. And Jones Day, interesting enough, there's always eerie connections. Jones Day down in Pittsburgh was run by a guy named Mickey Pohl, 
Some of you may know him. Some of you know, may, name, may uh, know Mickey, may know his brother Tippy. A uh, good, eerie family, and Mickey had done very well, and he was the head of the firm down there. He asked me to join him. I did. Uh, it's a large, large firm, approximately about 1,000 lawyers all around the world, all around the United States. Wonderful experience for a young lawyer. Learned, some, learned from some great lawyers, some big cases, traveled everywhere. It really, really educated me in the practice of law. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But something, yet, something kept pulling me back, kept pulling me back home. And I, I don't know. This is my home. This is where I'm from. So after practicing down there in about, for about seven or eight years with the uh, Jones Day, I returned back to Erie. Now, at the time I returned back to Erie, it was 1999. My mother had, unfortunately, had, had <coughs> cancer, and she passed away in 1999. I'm sad to say. I wish she was here today, obviously. Um, my father was having some health problems, but he recovered fully. And you know, thank God he's still with us today, even though he couldn't attend today. And I joined the, the law firm at McDonald Illick, and I see some of my friends from there here today. See one just walked in there. Fine, fine lawyers, good group of people, and enjoyed my time there as well. Learned a lot of things from those people well, got to know the Erie community a lot better, um, and enjoyed my time there. And around 2000, about 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago, I decided I'd go off on basically on my own. I joined Bill Scarpitti and, and his daughter, Allison Scarpitti, uh, two fine people, fine lawyers. Practiced with them for a long time, did different type of cases, got more involved in doing criminal defense, doing smaller cases, I would say, you know, representing rather than corporations, uh, large businesses, more individuals, more individuals. And that gave me a good perspective as well. And following that, about maybe about two, three, four years ago, I started thinking to myself, I would like to give back to the community. I would like to be a judge. I would like to be a judge in this community. So I said to myself, what, what do I need to complete my education to serve the people the best? And I said, well, it's not going to be fun, but I better get involved in defending the worst, the toughest, the ugliest that you'll have of cases that we have, and that's defending murder cases. Very, very tough thing to do. Uh, it teaches you a lot, but it's a very, very important thing. As anybody who's involved in the court system and anybody who's a citizen know, you know, how you judge a society is not just how you judge. There she goes. It stages, upstages me all the time. Um, but any, any society, you've got to look at how they treat the people who don't have everything, don't have enough, don't have anything. And that's how the system works. It's not gauge how you treat the, the, the best off, the most well off. It's how you treat the people who don't have anything. And I thought that was an important thing for me to see, if I was going to be a fair judge, if I was going to have perspective, if I was going to be able to, to serve the community. So I applied for and received the contract to represent homicide cases with, with indigent people. In the last three or four years, some of you may know or read about these cases, they're very heartbreaking. They're very tough to do, but it's a necessary thing to do. If their system's going to function, you have to be in there, and you have to defend the people who have no one else to defend them. And I'm proud to have done it. But I also am glad because it gave me a perspective, a perspective that I would take with me on the bench. Not everybody has the same situations and perspective, but I think it was an important part of my education to become a judge, and I'm glad I did it. I also, during this time period, had the opportunity to become uh, assistant city solicitor. And I've had the pleasure of working under Mayor Joe Sinnott, a wonderful guy, and, and Greg Carley, who's here today, a good mentor. He's a city solicitor. He helps me out, showed me the ropes there. And I've had the pleasure and the honor of defending and prosecuting cases on the behalf of the city of Erie. So I've represented the city as well. So I think if you take all this perspective, all this experience, it's a perfect roadmap a perfect, perfect highway to becoming a fair and, fair and experienced judge. And also about five, six years ago, I made the most important decision of my life, and she's sitting right here. This is Blair. I wasn't going to forget to introduce her. I, I've got to go home tonight. Um, I have my wife, Blair, and uh, also <laughs> later. If, if you haven't noticed, I have two small children. Um, <laughs> I've got James is three. Say hi, James. Hi. All right. <laughs> and I have Adela somewhere. Where, where's Adela? Outside? <laughs> yeah. She would up, I say, she's the upstage, upstager. But if anybody ever worries about if I'm going to get a big head if I became judge or anything, 
come home with me some night. You'll see where I rank. <laughs> I am not number one. I am not one, two, three, four. We also have three dogs, including a St. Bernard puppy and a cat. So I don't even know. They probably outrank me as well. So one thing I think anybody who's known me for all these years, I'm not going to change if I was elected. I'm the same person. I will be the same person. I will treat everybody the same way I've treated people over the years. I think anybody who walks into a courtroom, this is one of the most sacred places you can walk into. It's just, every, everything has to work well here for our system to work. And I think anybody who walks into a courtroom, if I was fortunate enough to be elected judge, will be treated with dignity, with respect, and will have a fair opportunity. And nothing's in my pocket. You know? um, and I, I, that, I would not change. And I hope anybody who knows me knows that I will, I will remain the same type of person that I've always been. So, in conclusion, basically, I'd like everybody to take a look at my experience when you think of this. I think I do have the perfect experience. I've been a federal prosecutor, and I've been on the other side of the fence representing murder cases. I've represented big corporations. I've represented people in small claims. And I've, been, I've changed diapers. Thank you. Um, and I've also had the uh, opportunity and the pleasure to represent the city of Erie over, over the last few years. So... Come April, come, well, come the next few months, I look forward to this challenge. I know there's a lot of campaigning. I'll tell you, it's, it's a lot of work. I'm, I'm learning that as I sit here today. There's a lot of work involved, <laughs> a lot of smiles up there, you guys know. Um, but, you know, it's actually been wonderful because it's made me reach out to people. It's made me talk to people. I've sat down uh, had lunch with people that I never had done that before. And it's just, just, it's been a good experience so far, and I hope to continue that experience. But I will work hard, and what I ask you for is your support, during this campaign, and I ask you for your vote on May 21st. And, I, and again, thank you so much. I'm very, very touched by everybody who's here.